Hello everybody and welcome back at Adobe Live. We are here together for another brand new episode of How To. Today, I will show you how to create a poster in Illustrator. I'm very excited about this project and about this stream. This stream is packed with so many techniques and skills to create some very cool effects. And uh, I can wait to show you. We really got a lot of work to do in uh, this hour together. In fact, let me just jump real quick to give you a preview of the work that we're going to be creating. Let me just see if I bring it up on my screen before we move forward. I just want to give you like a quick, quick um, image of what we're going to be creating. So hopefully you stay tuned together. Here we go. So that's the actual poster that we're going to be creating together. I'm going to set it in trim view so we can actually see the final work. And here it is. I really hope that we will be able to work out through the projects and the process of uh, everything together. But before we start, let me go ahead and say hello to everybody that is here in chat. Uh, I can see Steve. Ciao, Steve. What time is now there? Because I know that Steve is in, um, if I remember well, is in New Zealand. Steve, I'm so sorry if I'm, if I'm confusing. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Also, I can see my mom in the chat. I love that you guys know my mom and say hi to her. Ciao, Julie. Uh, Jackson and Sam Peterson. RB, what's up? Misty, nice to see you. Fantastic. So this is a project that we're going to be creating together. We're going to be working in Illustrator, Vector Art, but we're going to be using type. We're going to be using distortion effect. We're going to be using some grain effect, drop shadow, mask, text, paragraph style. This is a packed stream filled with so many wonderful um, the, the different techniques that we're going to be working together. Let me know in chat if you're excited about this project. I look forward to get started and to work on this poster with you. But before we get started, as usual, I prepare some little freebies for you. In fact, if you head on my website, which is iamclady.com, you will be able to click under resources, then freebies, or maybe I just give you, I should give you the direct link, which is iamclady.com slash freebies. Let me go ahead here and see if you can see the URL just above there. Um, once you head there, you will see there are many different freebies connected to different adult how to uh, Adobe Live show and much more that you can find in here. Uh, but that's is the actual, those are the actual assets for this stream. So you will see it's titled as the stream, how to uh, design a poster. And if you click on download assets, it will take you into a Dropbox link in where you have the final artwork. So exactly this uh, file, which is final with all the layers, with all the guides, everything looking nice uh, and organized, but also you will be able to access the starter file and the starter file as um, let me show you how it looks. If we jump real quick, let's see if we can get into the right folder. Um, there we go. So that's the starter file. Let me open it up for you because I want to show you how it looks like. So if you're opening up and working together, you'll be like, what is that? Well, don't worry about it. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to create that. So uh, this is actually a layout with grids. If you work together before in print or poster, the app usually to go to is in design. That's where I usually personally create also or my print project, but this is possible. You know, it's possible to actually create everything in Illustrator. And if you're wondering why, why I've decided to create a poster in Illustrator instead of InDesign is because the main focus. So the biggest part of this project is actually created with a vector file. And I just wanted to be able uh, to keep editing this vector illustration. Uh, but of course you can, if you wish, just design the illustration in Illustrator and then bring it into InDesign. If we do have time, I doubt we'll see hopefully, but I will show you also this little step. But it's time to get started. So as I said, I'm going to walk you through even these initial steps because the reason why I mentioned InDesign is InDesign as a built-in grid and layout because it is the king of software for layout. Uh, but I will show you some very useful tricks and techniques in order to create your layout and your grid by using shapes with uh, Adobe Illustrator. It's time to get started. So let's go back and let's head into the home page. When you open Illustrator, this is the welcome page. And from here, you can click on new file or simply press the command N or control N shortcut in order to open the new document window here. If you're looking to use this file for print, 
you want to set your intent for print. Always remember to use the correct intent. Think about what is the final output and the final use of your project because it's good to start from the very beginning to produce in what we called fit for purpose. So we want to make sure that we think of the purpose of our design. And in this case, our design is for print. And therefore, I'm going to set the um, design to print. And you will see that right away, Illustrator will set our um, units either into millimeters or inches, and we'll change the color mode to CMYK, which is the cyan magenta yellow K stands for black color mode, which is the standard color mode used uh, in the industry wide for printing. And uh, the raster effect, which is the definition pixel um, per inch is set to 300, which again is the standard for uh, normal printing. Now, let me just jump into the chat real quick. If you do have any questions, don't forget to jump on behance.net slash live. Um, I can see the there is a, someone in the chat on YouTube. I cannot read the chat. It's just very far away on the screen. So come over on Behance because that's the chat where we say hello. Remember, um, that's the place where we ask questions. Adobe Live is beautiful because it's this gorgeous community of so many talented students, professional creatives. We come here together to share uh, our techniques. I learn during the stream new things from your questions. So don't be shy and use this time to... Um, to, to learn together and of course to ask questions about printing, about illustration, illustrator, InDesign, graphic design and freelance as well if you want. Make sure they use this time. Benjamin, nice to see you. Misty, let me know guys where you're watching from. So Steve, I was asking, um, I think that he is in, uh, oops, got the wrong mouse, he's in New Zealand, is Tuesday, Thursday is ninth. Also, you're you're in tomorrow. You're in the future. Thursday, nine thirty three a.m. Uh, Sam, lovely to see you. Fantastic. Let me know where you're watching from. Pietro, ciao. Lovely to see you. Fantastic. So let's keep going now. Here, the first thing that I'm going to do is to name my file. In this case, I'm going to call it "How to Poster." You can give it any time that you want. It looks like I've pressed the wrong button. It's just next to the microphone. Let's see if we can make it work like that. There we go. Um, how to poster. And in this case, we're just naming the file. By doing so, many people think that when you are naming the file and then click on create, you save it automatically. No, this is just to create a file. Now, before we create it, let me show you another setting. If you go ahead and click on more setting, which is right here at the bottom of the new document page, you will be able to uh, add more settings. In this case, the one that I'm looking for, because I'm looking to uh, design and output for print are the bleed. If you're wondering what is a bleed, the bleed is the area around the image that you want to extend outside the cutting page. Let's see if I can show you. All I have here is a um, I have, a, I have a drink mat, but it's printed and it, any printed item, it's fine. So this is a lovely drink mat that I had from Creative Pro, which is uh, actually Creative Pro Week is an event where I'm going to be live with another wonderful streamer and many others, amazing uh, instructor in May in Washington, D.C. But what I'm trying to tell you here is that let's say that this uh, mat is originally white. So we're actually printing in black. Once we create a bleed, we're actually creating a border outside this area. So outside the uh, main circle area that is going to be cut and it just is a three millimeter or 0 0.125 inches. And by doing so, we allow the printer, once it cuts the shape, which can be a square, like a page, or again, even something like that, like a, a little mat, it allows to have a little bit of a margin because imagine once a printer cut, it doesn't just cut one single one. The printer cuts hundreds and hundreds of pages or mats at the same time. So the there is a little bit of margin on error that the blade moves and can go outside of the page or in this case, outside of the mat. And if the blade moves, you will be left with the white page, which it looks quite horrible. So imagine if there was no bleed and there was an error, you can see that I have some white. You will be able to see the white space around the actual mat that doesn't get cut out properly. But imagine if all this square here behind, instead of white, is covered in black. So if we extend our background outside into what we call the bleed area, we will be able to not even notice this error. So the bleed allows the printer to have this margin on error and extends the background. Uh, as I said, three millimeter is the standard uh, size of the bleed area 
or you can set it in inches. So it's 0 0.125. Again, that's the standard. Uh, from here, you can choose also a number of artboards and of course the size. Uh, I'm going to go with the A3 size and I'm going to click on create document. You can also choose the size uh, in many different places inside the new document window, but also if you open the properties panel and you click on edit artboard, you will be able right away here to choose between different presets. Now, A3 is basically double of a letter. Uh, page and uh, you will be able to uh, just create this is a standard size for poster. Fantastic. So let's get started. Uh, what I've done here also by uh, selecting edit artboard is to enter into the artboard tool. If you've never used the artboard tool before, shift O is the shortcut to enter it. And then you can also enter its property by clicking on return. And in here you will see also that's another location in which you can change the size of your document. You have so many different presets for many different purposes, of course, for print and for online. When you're done, you can simply click on OK. And to exit the artboard tool, because you can see that now the artboard is selected. It's got all this little dotted line. Let me go ahead and show you, see if you can see it a little bit better here. No, sir, we don't need you right now. Um, so what you can do is just simply to uh, press the letter V. So you will see now we have the arbor selected. If we press the letter V, we head back into our selection tool, which is our black arrow, and the arbor is not selected anymore. And since we were talking about bleed, here it is. The bleed is delimited by this red line. So this black line that is a lot inside the white. So the white is the page. So that's the actual border of the content. The black line is where the trim line is. So where the printer is going to cut our poster. Uh, and the red delimits the bleed area, which is at the moment gray. Fantastic. So hopefully that's all ready to go. And all we're left to do is to start creating our guides. Uh, let's go ahead and just simply select the the rectangle tool because I told you these amazing techniques will allow you to use shapes in order to create a line. Uh, there is a, someone in the chat, Potato, thank you so much for sharing my Instagram. Yes, you can go ahead and see my Instagram. Anika, lovely to see you. Um, uh, I share a lot of illustrator and graphic design tips, so I look forward to see you on Instagram as well. The, the link is at I am Claudie pretty much everywhere online. Fantastic. So as you can see, once you select the rectangle tool, which you can find from the toolboard or simply access by pressing the letter M inside your keyboard, you will go ahead and then drag the cursor on top of any corner of the page. In this case, I'm starting from the top left corner and you will see right away if you do have your smart guide selected and they are selected by uh, default that the word intersect will appear in purple. If you do not see anything, it might be that you have, uh, even by mistake, turned off the smart guides. In order to uh, turn them on, head under view and under guide, you will be able to uh, make sure that you have these smart guides. There we go. Sorry, they're here. They're not under. Um, we go there under the view menu and then smart guys here they are and you can use the shortcut also command U or control U on windows in order to trigger so it might be that you use the shortcut and you have hidden it by any by mistake so once you have your guides you don't need to even know the exact size of the document because if as long as you click intersect and then click and drag and you make sure that you head over and you have the other intersect at the bottom on the side let me see if i can actually uh, zoom it right there there is another intersect there at the bottom of the page and you let go, you know that you created a rectangle that is the same size of our uh, artboard. Fantastic. Now it's time to split our design into grids. And uh, actually, I'm going to start by the margin. So because we talk about, you know, all the dis different area, we have the bleed area that is outside. We have the trim area that is inside. And then we're going to create a margin area. So the margin area is a safe area inside where we do not want necessarily any very important text uh, or where we can, you know, use it to align the contact. In order to make sure that we uh, create a margin that is equal on every side, what we have to do is to head under the object menu with your path, of course, with your shape selected. And by the way, let me change color because I feel like that we created a white rectangle, so you cannot really tell. I'm just going to make it red. It doesn't really matter what color you create it. I'm going to go ahead and under object, I'm going to select path and offset path. Here it is. So object, path, offset path. By clicking on offset path, the offset path little dialog box 
here it is just above me will pop up from here you will be able to uh, offset the path so move it from the center inside or outside of course if you give it a positive value so for example 20 millimeter uh, it will go and it will become bigger so the act it will actually grow as you can see is bigger than our original shape but in this case because we do want a margin that is inside our artboard i'm going to assign a negative value in my case i'm choosing a minus 20 so look what happens as soon as I click away, we have this other little border, which is exactly what we want, our margin, and uh, uh, go ahead and click on OK. So now that we have this little square here inside, let me zoom in to see, to show you a little bit better there. So we have the rectangle with the entire area. So we have our bleed, then we have our trim, and now we create our margin. But how do we transform this shape into margin? Well, that's really simple. Simply using the shortcut Command 5 or Control 5 if you're working on a Mac. And you will see in just one click, the shape is gone and uh, you have transformed your shape into a guide. And don't worry, because we're going to use that again. So here it is. That's our guide that is set there. And uh, if you want, you can even move the rectangle away and the margin stays exactly where we left it. Now, to realign this, make sure to head under the Align menu inside the Properties panel. From here, align to artboard and align it horizontally and vertically to the center. Now it's time to split our artboard into grids. So you can do that by page. So you can choose it uh, by using the entire artboard, or you can also simply adapt your rectangle to the margin and then use the margin. I like to do it from the entire page, but that's completely up to you. Again, we're still using the same rectangle. In this case, just simply select it. Let's head back on the object menu, which you will find at the top, and then select path. And from path, in this case, instead of heading to offset path, we're going to scroll down, which is right here. Uh, we're going to head into split into grids. Once you click into split into grids, you will be able to access this uh, pop-up menu or dialog box in which you can choose the exact number of rows and columns. In my case, I'm going to uh, create, let's see, in, by the way, if you click on preview, you can actually see it happen live. So you will see that, you know, two, three, you can add as many rows as you want. And of course, the same goes with, uh, uh, with the actual uh, column. So in this case, I'm going to add, for example, five rows and you can add as many as you want. Let's, let's go a little bit crazy with this. You can also add, let's say, 10, 10 columns and 10 rows and five columns. Uh, you can, again, choose whatever you prefer for that, maybe four, just to have a little bit of a double split. So we have two halves and then two halves again, whatever you prefer. Uh, once you're done, make sure to click on preview. If you add guides, it will add guides outside. Um, I don't really want to use that. So let's untick that for now and just simply click on OK. By the way, let me show you this quick trick. If you want to, you can also add a gutter in between the columns and in between the rows as well. A gutter is simply the space in between each column and each row. So if you have a text which sits at the end and at the beginning of a column, by adding a gutter, it will add the space so the text doesn't text doesn't touch each other and you can keep that throughout the document providing a great organization. So in this case, I'm just going to use it only for my columns, not for my uh, rows. So I just have that space, which I know that is five millimeters. Perfect. Once done, just simply click on OK. And at the moment, all we've done is we have split our uh, design into our main rectangle into a grid. And remember, the amazing shortcut that will allow you to transform any shape and any path into a guide is Command 5. So let's use that again, Command 5 or Control 5, and boom, we're done. We literally divided all our shape and transform it into a guide. Now, before moving on, let's select our layer panel. And by the way, if I mention a panel that is not active inside your workspace, so basically you cannot see on your screen, head on the window menu because that's the home of every panel. As you can see, if you do not find, for example, the layers panel, which is the latest panel that I've just mentioned, all you have to do is to click on the layers panel and it will pop up into your screen so you'll be able to access it. 
Now, layers are containers in which you can place different elements of your design. You can group it, rearrange it, and of course you can create multiple uh, layer because layers also control the visibility and editability of that specific group of content. So I'm gonna go here and double click on the layer and I'm gonna call this layer guides. So I know that all I've done so far is to add some guides to my design um, and that will allow me also to lock this guide. So I, as you can see, by using the little lock icon, which is here next to the name of the layer, you won't be able to edit these guides. So they're gonna be there, they're gonna be left alone. We can use it, we can also hide them whenever we don't want it. It's absolutely perfect for our design. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little uh, plus icon under the layers panel in order to add more layers. In this case, I'm gonna have as a standard a background and then another layer for text. Those are the one that I usually have um, and I go ahead and rename it if I need to, but also always add like three or four layers because just to uh, have a good organization. And then I'm gonna call this one effects and maybe another one for graphic elements. So those are usually the one that I have you know, in every project. I uh, remember the order of this layer stack. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see it properly matters because the, the content of the layers that are placed above will display on top of the content of the layers placed below. So we always want to make sure that we bring the text at the very top and then usually the effects are above the graphics and the background is at the very end. And of course the guides, which I actually misspelled, let's double click on it so we can change the name at any time and let's unlock it so we can bring it at the very top and lock it again. The guides, they're going to be at the very top. Fantastic. I'm going to show you um, while we design that you can edit these um, layers, you can move it around, you can swap it, you can also swap the um, the, the content. Let's uh, let's see if there is any question in chat. Karen, I just mentioned you a moment ago. So we're talking about Creative Pro when I was using the little mat. So Karen will be with me on uh, Creative Pro Week. Go and check it out. There's an amazing event. It's in Washington DC, but also live. Uh, so you can access uh, live to so many wonderful um instructors and tutorial session is an amazing creative uh, week and an amazing place to network as well. And Karen will be there with me uh, this year, which I'm very, very happy. Fantastic. So every saying, hey, uh, looking good, Claudia, I almost call, call you Claudia. Well, Claudia is my name. Claudia is my nickname. So <laughs> Harry, you actually done really, really good. Fantastic. So let's keep going. We have our guides. It's time to move in creating our text effect. Remember, this is exactly where we creating our we're a little wave, it's time to uh, create it. So in this technique, we're going to be using uh, some distortion effects and some classic 3D. In uh, the past version of one other episode of how to, we used the, the new 3D. So I showed you all the new uh, preview technology with the, the amazing 3D. Today, we're going to dig into a little bit of the uh, oldest technique, which is still available. And they're also very, very useful. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and start clicking on our graphics because we're going to start to build the main graphic elements. And I'm also going to go ahead and close this for now. Uh, let me just copy this text. See, all my layers are all nicely and organized. I just want to copy the text right here just so we have it somewhere where I can, if I need, just copy it. And uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and close this file. The reason why I'm closing the file is because there are a lot of grain, a lot of effect, drop shadows. The file is a bit heavy. I am, I'm just on a laptop right now and I'm also streaming. So uh, I just want to keep and let my illustrator breathe a little bit because I'm going to add more effects. Fantastic. So make sure to uh, select the graphics and I'm going to go ahead by actually adding the text. So from here, I'm going to select the type tool, which you can find here on top of the um, menu, or you can also just trigger by using the letter T. Uh, on your keyboard and from here I'm going to zoom in because we cannot really see much and what I'm going to call uh, the, I'm just going to use how to again you can use any title you want maybe uh, a title for your event so I'm just going to write how to and then on Adobe Live and I know that that's pretty invisible don't worry about it we're going to change that in just a second so on the first line I'm writing how to and then on the second line I'm writing Adobe Live and as I say that's really invisible so I'm going to go ahead and select my properties from the properties panel I'm going to select a character I'm actually before doing so let me bring that uh, on top of the actual layout so we can actually see something 
here it is. So how to on Adobe Live. That's the poster. That's the main um, topic of the poster. So I'm going to make sure that I select uh, the most important part for the biggest graphic. Remember, hierarchy is always so important. We're going to talk about it once we move on into the actual text. Hierarchy will guide the eye of the reader. A poster, remember, is always seeking attention. That's what a poster is. Is always looking to get some attention. A poster is to scream, look at me, look at me. And then once you get that attention, so that will be the first element that you want to capture attention. Then you can move into smaller text and smaller details. So when people move in, uh, they will be able to read. And remember, a poster need to be seen for far away. So you really want that top element, the most important element to be shouting as loud as possible. So it can grab people's attention from all the different side. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and start to pick a bold, nice, easy to read text. Uh, and to do so, you can find that from the character panel. You can browse all the beautiful font library, hundreds and hundreds of fonts available for you. You can also find more by activating instantly uh, any fonts, preview it as well from the Adobe Live library. Let's see if it's uh, ready to go. Looks like it's taking a second to initialize. Let me see if I'm on the right internet. Looks like I am. Here we go. So you can simply click on it. And oops, let me go back. And by clicking on find more and you hover on it, you will be able to automatically preview. And then if you click on the cloud, also activate and use any font part of the Adobe library right away. Uh, for this specific um, project, I'm going to use a font that is called alternate. It's got a very long name. Once I know that it's alt it starts with alternate, but I will then um, read you their entire <laughs> the entire name once I find it. So is alternate um, gothic, I think. Let me see. Let me just find gothic. Here we go. See, let's go ahead and find. Oh, that's nice. And that's an Acme gothic and it's part of the Adobe Light. That's super nice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this alt gothic condensed. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that is nice and chunky. I want a text that is nice and legible that you can see from very, very far away. Uh, nice and bold with some very nice letters here. So Franklin Gothic looks looks quite nice as well, but it's a little bit short. I want something that has some feature in terms of height as well. Uh, and therefore, I think that I'm just going to go ahead with the, the one that I uh, was looking before. So again, you can also search as I did uh, as well from simply by typing inside. So we can either go with this uh, alt gothic. Yeah, because it has this structure of being tall and chunky at the same time. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead here and select a nice size, maybe a 90. I'm going to start by 89 and then I'm just going to bring it up. Yep. Uh, and in terms of height, I want to just keep it together. So I'm actually going to uh, make like just a little bit of space so enough that is readable, but I don't want to give it too much space because we're going to uh, place it in the wave. Remember, it's always important to think about the final project. So um, it's always nice to have a look at what the final output is and to think towards that. And don't worry, you can always experiment and create many different texts. To be completely honest with you, I've experimented myself many times. So I know that with this technique, especially on a wave, if you have too much distance between the letters, it just starts to become hard to read. So you don't want too much space in between the letters. So in this case, something like 89 on a 76 uh, leading is fine. Although by rule, a leading is always higher than the point size of the text. So for example, in this case, if the point size is 89, the leading will have to be like 90, 95 or something like that. But I'm using again a little bit less. And then something else that you want to do here uh, for this particular project is also to repeat the text over and over again. And this is because we need to have the text going around our little zigzag curve. So simply select text by double clicking on it, press command C. And then here you can just select a return and then copy it as many times as you want. I think in this case, I'll probably do it like six times, five or six times should do. Let's see how many times we have here. One, two, three, four, maybe two more. And if by any chance, if you're adding and you do not find the text, remember, you can always edit your text area by clicking and dragging on the side of the bounding box. And if you do so by your text get distorted is because instead of clicking and dragging when you use the type tool, you just clicked once. And the difference by doing so is that you created a point type versus 
an area type. But don't worry, you can swap between an area type and a point type at any time by double clicking on the side handle, which is on that side. Let me go ahead and zoom in on it. So if you double click on this handle, you will be able to transform your area type into a point type. So look what happened. If I click and drag, the text will be distorted. If you hold the shift key, you will resize it proportionally. Uh, but what I was trying to say here is that if you need to create more space and you cannot do it so, double click. In this case, you will see it looks like a white hollow handle. Double click on it and here we go. We convert it into an area type which you can change without actually changing the text. Fantastic. So we're pretty much ready. I wanted to have something that, you know, just to, for you to have an idea, if you're using a different font, try to find something that it almost covered the entire page. Because remember, uh, although the main text area doesn't take the entire page, we're still going to have to like move it around. So it's going to get a little bit um, crunched. Then I, uh, as a habit, I like to make copies before changing things around. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the option, option um, key and drag while selecting my text in order to create a copy. And now that's a very fundamental step. Let's go ahead under window menu and select symbols. So I'm going to transform Form this text into a symbol and I do so by clicking uh, selecting the text if you want you can also outline it by holding the shift command O you will see that the text in this case is not editable anymore and that's why it always come handy to have an editable uh, copy maybe if your client your art director or yourself you change your mind and you want to uh, change the text you will be able right away to jump and do the edits because you saved a copy uh, and if you wish you can also have maybe a specific layer where you just have uh, the copy i usually do that i just at the end collect all the extra bits and put into a work in progress uh, layer fantastic so uh, hi, Ryan. Hi, Odari. Lovely to see you here. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, and once you outline your text, you do not have to, but I prefer to outline it. Go ahead and click on the plus icon to add the new symbol. I'm going to call it text. And then it doesn't really matter if it's a movie clip or graphic. Don't worry about that. Those are all for animation. They used to be uh, functional with flash. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that you name it correctly and click on OK. And you will see that your new symbol is added under the symbol menu and you will see why that's important now before using our symbol it's time to create our little wave how do we create such a such a pretty nice wave should we go and use the curvature tool or the pen tool and start clicking and trying to create a way which is going to look messy and it's going to take so much time and it's never going to look like a perfect wave in just a click no we like to work smarter so let me show you how to do that simply go ahead and under the uh, rectangle tool under the shape tool you will find the line segment tool which you can also activate by using the backslash key then click and drag while holding the shift key in order to create a straight line and here we go we have our little straight line and that's the starting point in order to create a wave now select your wave add under effect and from here distort and transform and zigzag here it is so um, that's effect distort and transform zigzag click on it to open the dialog box and let's move it away and make sure that the little preview is ticked so you can see the actual changes taking place live so uh, you can change between smooth corner or sharp corner if you want to see here at the moment I have this little zigzag so the corner are actually sharp and I want to change it into smooth and we already have a wave so all we're left to do is to change the size I usually uh, double the size and the ridges so in this case for example I would probably do if I use like a size of 14 I will use seven ridges uh, or something like that or 10 and 5 up to you once you're done so again size the number of ridges so the number of wave you can use the slider uh, or you can just simply input a value by using the field then smooth if you want the wave or corner if you want the zigzag click on ok when you're done and as I did before I'm going to press alt and just create a copy just because it's I said I like to keep a copy of everything if I want to go back before I modify I just want to hold on to what I'm doing uh, Odari yes poster design I'm so excited as well let me just give you a little quicker preview because you joined for everybody to join late that's exactly and exactly because I'm talking about wave but I know that uh, we started about half an hour ago so for those of you who have just joined that's the exact wave that's the text on a wave that we're going to be um, placing inside our design perfect so let's go ahead and jump back into illustrator 
Laura, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us here. As I said, I'm going to start using some of the old 3D techniques. So if you had on uh, back on Adobe Live, you will see that I've used the previous uh, 3D technique, where we, the, the new uh, live preview, the new technology preview with all the man, man, uh, fantastic. Uh, sorry, I've been in Italy, guys. So I keep thinking about Italian words <laughs> as I speak. Uh, the wonderful tools with the 3D, with the uh, lights and uh, again, Again, the new preview but there are some very cool effects that you can find under our old 3d so if you had under effects and 3d here you will be able to access to the 3d classic and in this case we're going to select extrude and bevel and from here uh, you can move it on the side so you can actually see making sure that your preview is uh on you can see every change that you make live and you can actually have a little play and just see how does it look like and you can start building your wave uh, once you experiment and you know your value or if you want to use the value that i am using you can go ahead and start input them right away so i'm using a value of 28 minus 6 and uh, in this case it's going to be another ne uh, positive 74 and here it is so i think that that's probably negative 74 let me go ahead and see otherwise is on the other side perfect and uh, now we have our little wave again you can go ahead and play just simply by dragging the preview here the rectangle of dragging also the radius or just simply specifying the angle of the rotation now another thing that is very important is to create an extrude depth here it is so the more you extrude your rotation the more you just basically bring it out i think that's a little bit of excessive something uh, usually between 400 500 is what I use um, let's see if 700 800 maybe looks uh, nice for these uh, for this project in particular and uh, then I'm just gonna go ahead here and click on OK and I've created my little wave background which is ready for my text and as I did before alt alt and create a copy because we might be using that again now what happens if you do want to make further changes like you decide that that's exactly the shape in which you want to add the text well you can always access uh, the appearances that you apply to any shape from the appearance panel I love the appearance panel you can do so many things from it it's very useful um, the lovely Tony Harmer that was uh, guest at Adobe Live not long ago showed the extent and the power all the many different things that you can do with the appearance panel so head to the window menu if the appearance panel is not present inside your workspace head under window and from here you can find the appearance panel and then you can click on it to pop it up mine is right sitting there and let's bring it up so you can actually see a little bit more so the appearance panel tells you everything all the attributes of your selection so see if i select the symbol it will tell you that this text is a symbol if i select the live text it tell you that it's type so right away it tell you what things are and if there are any appearances attached to them so in this case we have our path to which we have applied the zigzag uh, and you can also you know see the before and after without the zigzag so you can also tick and untick preview uh, and uh, um, turn off different effects and same for the extrude that was our line before the extrude and that's our line with the extrude but most importantly you can click on each of these options in order to make edits and the edit that i want to make here is to map some art and of course the map that i want to uh that i want to the art that i want to map inside my shape inside my path is the text now before you do so make sure that you select the right surface at the moment this is uh you will see that the surface is also outlined can you see by this little uh, red line it tells you which surface you are working on so if i move on to a second surface so you see the red line move from the left to the right while the third surface which is the one that we want is also uh, outlined which are the line in between the two curves perfect so the one that we're looking for is surface number three um, and all we're left to do is to head to our symbol and now you probably understand why we transformed our text into a symbol click on the down pointing arrow and from here select 
text. And in just one click, we literally brought the text inside our shape. You cannot see it because we do have the geometry, which is the main path uh, still active. If you click on uh, invisible geometry, here we go, is there and is already previewed. So all you have to do is to tick invisible geometry. So you will make the shape invisible. And the only thing that you'll see is the text. Fantastic. All you're left to do now is to start to move your text around by clicking and dragging. So you can literally use this preview here to have the text. Make sure that you drag it on the right side. It looks like I put it upside down. Uh, and then you can also use um, your text and your shift key in this case, like I explained before, if you use your shift key, you're able to uh, resize any object without changing its proportion. So make sure to do that correctly. Uh, and also what you want to do here is to make sure that we start from the actual edge. Here we go. So we have how to, to how to, we have some space in between the two sides. Maybe you want to center it a little bit more. So we have equal space. Uh, and I feel like that's a nice size for, for our text. As you've seen, because we put it in the wave, it just kind of uh, became much, much smaller. Fantastic. Now simply click on OK and OK again. And uh, the harder part is done. We already have our text, which is uh, inside our path, inside, inside our wave. And you can move it. You can do whatever you want with it. Now I've saved a copy and I'm just going to make another copy because I want to give it a little bit of a background. I'm just going to leave it there for a second. I'm going to head into my layer and select my background layer. And I'm going to go ahead and select my rectangle tool, which is now here under the line segment to create a rectangle, which is just going to work as a main background for my design. So here we go over here. I'm going to go ahead and create this rectangle and I'm just going to give it a color feel. Uh, and all I've done here in order to swap between the black stroke and the black fill is to use the shortcut shift X. So with shift X, you can swap the content, uh, uh, sorry, the color of the fill and the stroke. But also if you just look right here, just above me, those are the stroke and fill control. If you just use the letter X, you'll be able simply to swap which one you want to use. So am I using the fill or am I using the stroke? Well, with shift X, you actually swap the color in between them. And if you want to set something to default, which is white for white uh, feel and black stroke, just simply press the letter D, boom. And we actually go back to the default color for our shapes. In this case, I want to set my stroke to transparent, so to none, and my feel to something like very bright color. Let me know actually in the chat which color you want to use. I think that for my um, poster, I've used like an orange color. Uh, but let me just go ahead and show you. So that's the color I've picked. Let me know in the chat if there is any specific color. Maybe I should give you a choice. Uh, usually me and Vudoval do all the lovely um, uh, poll. I wish I could put a poll. For now, I'm just going to keep it orange. But let me know in the chat if you want me to try any other color. Fantastic. And you'll see now why I've created a copy of my uh, design here. Remember, in order to change this design, the color that I'm using is the stroke. So if I now set my stroke to white, the color changes. Now, why this is not set to white, even if you will see the color of the stroke from my stroke control is white. Well, let's go ahead and check the appearance panel and head back into the 3D classic. So from here, you will see that we have a surface selected which is called plastic shading. Make sure to select no shading in order to reveal the original color. If you do have a plastic shade of whatever shading on top of it, it, uh, it will change the actual surface because it's almost applying a texture to it. Perfect. So let's go ahead and click on OK now that we have fixed this issue there. And then let's go ahead and bring our text to the front by selecting it. So I'm just simply clicking on it and then use the command shift right bracket or control shift right bracket if you're working on windows then all the shift key to select both the text and the little wave head to the properties panel align to selection and i'm going to align it horizontally and vertically and here we are so we have already our text inside the shape fantastic i'm going to click and drag onto it and i'm actually going to head to my layers and lock my background so i can freely select without selecting my background cannot believe that we have 15 minutes to 
go, maybe a little less. And I will, I'm so excited about showing you all these techniques. So let's go ahead here and uh, look at here. You can actually move and change the direction of the shape, but this will distort the actual waves. So before you do so, once you select them, you want to make sure to head under object and expand appearance. By expanding the appearance, the first thing that you notice is that the little line, I'm just going to undo it and zoom in so perhaps you can see it a little bit better. So at the moment, we're still working with our line, with our wave. If I press Command Y and I go back into my wire mode, into my outline view, all I have here is a line. So those are literally two lines overlapping to which we have applied effect, 3D effect, mapping text and the zigzag. Those are only effect and you can also appreciate that from uh, the uh, appearance panel. So again, if you take away the zigzag uh, and then the 3D, we also lose the text. So uh, in order to transform this actual line and to uh, you know remove this effect and expand them so they actually become part and transform them into actual shape, all you have to do is again head to object and then expand appearance. And you will see right away once we enter the outline mode, this has changed massively because now we expanded all the effect, we transform it from a, just a visual preview into an actual proper vector. So we now have uh, things that we can do like literally scaling it. Remember, always hold the shift, hold the shift key once you want to scale your design, because otherwise you will be distorting it. While if you hold the Y holding shift, you will be able to transform it proportionally. And here we have. So something else that we want to add here perhaps is uh, some um, dropping sh drop, drop shadow. To do so, select one of the two graphic. In this case, I'm just going to select the background because the text is now on a different um, on a different group. So with the appearance panel selected, head to the effects menu. And from here, we're going to go under stylize and drop shadow. And by doing so, we will be able to access the drop shadow menu and we can go ahead and set the drop shadow offset to whatever we want. So in this case, I'm going to bring it more to the right side. So maybe just a four and then from the bottom, I'm just going to leave it to one. I just want to have this little subtle effect here at the bottom. Now, what I don't like is the fact that it's so opaque. It looks so, so opaque and the blur, I want it that uh, spreads a little more. So I'm going to set the blur maybe to uh, six. So it just spreads a little bit more. Maybe let's do four and we offset it to four here. You need to bear with me and with my laptop because I click, but the change take uh, take a moment to catch up. And something else that I want to do is to turn down the opacity. So in this case, I'm going to set the opacity to perhaps 50%. So it's a little bit more of a subtle effect. And you will see that that happens just very slowly. It will change in just a second into the actual graphic. Go ahead and experiment. Choose whatever offset level you want for your axis and for your uh, Y. So for your height and for your size, that's what exactly what it means. And then simply click on OK. And remember, for the color, you do not have to choose black. Let's see if we choose orange. You can just simply choose a darker orange, maybe a brown or even a reddish color. So you can just move into something like that and just create a shadow that actually looks a little bit more realistic. So it's not necessarily black. Um, fantastic. So let's go ahead. And in this case, we can make it maybe a little bit more opaque. Let's see if a 65, 65% uh, should work and look nice with this color and then click on OK. Fantastic. As you can see, we have the drop shadow on the top and uh, we're pretty much ready to go here. All we're left to do is to hide the part of the design that we do not want to show. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and move it a little bit to the side, just like so. And then from here, uh, I'm going to start to apply different effects. Uh, if you want to, you can uh, just lock the graphics. Maybe before doing so, I'm just going to create a copy. So I'm going to select and press Command C to create a copy of my main graphic and then select the effect uh, layers and press Command F to paste it in front. And as you will see, we have a brand new effect in front. Now, if I want to keep the shape, but I don't want the drop shadow anymore and I don't want all the other opacity, opacity option, simply select on the drop shadow and on the little bean icon and it will go away. And the same from the opacity options. 
So click on it and click on delete in order to delete it. Now, what I want to do here is to create the, the little um, grain effect. How do you create a grain effect? Super easy. All we are going to do is to apply a gradient. Press the letter G to select the gradient tool. Now make sure that we have the fill. Um, and then from the properties panel, you will see that the gradient type will pop up. Select the first gradient. It looks like we have selected more than one shape. Let's see, let's bring it back. So we have two different gradients here. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the gradient is aligned in the right direction. So click on the gradient group. And from here, uh, you can also twist it and change it. So you can move it just like so. Uh, and you can also remove, oops, do not delete the entire shape. <laughs> just simply move the gradient, whatever you want. In this case, I've actually rotated because uh, I wanted to swap. I wanted to have all the darker color on this side. Once you're done and you have added your little gradient there, uh, all you're left to do is to uh, now create a grain by adding a grain effect. Remember, creating a gradient is paramount, is the first step in order to make sure that the grain effect works just perfectly. So always from the appearance panel, head to the FX, which is the effect icon at the bottom of the panel and select uh, texture and from here grain. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. So effect, texture and grain. And from here, you can go ahead and select grain. Second, select the steeple the fat and choose the intensity and contrast that you want. I'm just going to have it really, really subtle. So I use very, very small values here because I like to have a very subtle effect and then simply click on OK. And here we have this grain effect. But how do we have a show in inside of our uh, on top of our design? So all you're left to do here is to click on the opacity. And then from here, we select multiply. And by doing so, we're going to be hiding all the uh, white area so the white disappear and the only thing that is going to show are the darker areas from the layer above to the layer below now the only issue here is this still this looks quite heavy so another way in which you can dull it down is by triggering the opacity down so we applied the multiply blend effect from the opacity menu and then we um, take the opacity down to kind of like maybe 40%, no more than that. I just want like, to have like a little bit of a texture. So it feels almost like it's a paper uh, that is moving. Right. So uh, we're pretty much ready to go with our appearance. Um, if you want to do so and achieve the same effect, I'm just going to move on because I want to add the text real quick and talk to you about paragraph style in a few minutes. Uh, but if you looked at the design that I created originally, let me see if we, I added the same here at the top. So I also have some grain there at the top, uh, just like so. So if you wish to do that, just simply repeat the same by adding a rectangle. And as I say, the first step, it will be to um, let's see if we do it real quick right here. All I've done is use the eyedropper tool uh, to create uh, my gradient. And then from here, I can rotate my gradient. Maybe let's make it on the other side. We rotate it just like so. Uh, and then I'm going to set it to 90 degree and then opposite. And then from here, I'm going to apply the grain. Let's see if I can do it real quick. <laughs> and effect. And again, texture, grain, and I'm just going to press an OK here. Make sure that it's stippled and from the opacity, set it into blend mode, multiply. And here it is. Let's set it maybe to 30 percent, just like so. See, so it was it was easy enough that we could use a few minutes to do it. Now, you could group all these elements together and create a mask in order to hide the bit on the top. But you know, when you have effects, sometimes Illustrator could struggle. Also, there is not much that we want to mask is just the top side, just a little bit on the top to hide. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead on the layer and add another layer and I'm going to call it mask. Uh, shape mask. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I lock my effects. So you can see I got my effects. I got my graphic. I got my background. Everything is layered up. I got my uh, guide so I can really, really take control and edit every single part of my design. From the shape mask, again, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and click and drag in order to create a rectangle. Remember, in order to make the default white and black stroke, press the letter D and it goes on default. And then for the stroke, see Simply set it to none. Uh, and once you're done here, all you're left to do is again 
uh, head to the layers panel and lock your shape. Here it is. That's how without the shape and that's with the shape on top. So we're just simply adding the top. So we created some negative space for the text. And uh, let's see in that Megan is saying, sorry, I was reading the chat. Megan is saying, uh, I love this cloudy. We have to watch it from the beginning to see how you made that effect. Megan is so, so easy. You're going to find it super, super easy to do. Uh, we just created some wave. I'm going to try to do a quick recap once I talk about the text. Uh, something that I wanted to do here, I have unlocked the effects and the graphics and I'm going to go ahead and select them all because I want to bring my uh, text a little bit higher up because I've seen that there was a corner there that I didn't like. Uh, I'm just going to bring it and I'll make it everything a little bit bigger. The drop shadow and the blur, everything is going to take just a second. Just give your laptop a moment if you need some breathing space to uh, make sure that everything happens and then go ahead and lock it again. So everything is there to go. And uh, unfortunately, it's time to go with the text. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and place the text is the same technique that I used before by placing the text. In this case, I want to make sure that I actually place it inside the right um, the right layer. And as I said, unfortunately, it is time to say goodbye, but don't worry, we're going to be back with how to. Don't forget that you have this file and the starter file available from uh, my website. So I am slash freebies. You will be able to access the assets. You have the final artwork, the starter file, so you can have a play and you can see the original file, my original design ready to go. And uh, we used the appearance panel. We used the, the 3D effects. We mapped art and we created the distort and transform in order to create the um, main zigzag. And here that was just simply text that I've added by using again the type tool like I've done before. The only difference that I will suggest you to do whenever you create a design is always to set paragraph style and character styles but we're gonna have another episode of how to let me know in the chat if you want more how to so we can schedule more stream together uh, in order to make sure that we do have more and more content that makes you happy and then teaches you and shows you how to create your favorite project on Adobe Live using one of these many amazing apps that are available with a wonderful creative cloud subscription so I hope you enjoyed this stream as usually was an absolute blast being with you this hour is gone way way too fast i wish everybody a lovely evening and lovely day and don't forget stay tuned on behance there are so many more streamings coming up and uh on a youtube channel a uh, creative cloud a youtube channel as well i'll see you very soon everybody and for now it's goodbye bye <laughs>